friends, I'm extremely honored to be able to um, deliver uh, this uh, brief lecture from long distance. It is unfortunate that I cannot make it to South Africa, um, and that's n definitely not because it's far. I've been to South Africa many, many times. I love the place. I almost never miss the opportunity to go there. It's mostly because, as you realize, this is September, the new school year is starting, and now I'm completely prisoner of this office. So let me talk a little bit about anti-fragility. But to explain anti-fragility, the best way is to start by explaining what is fragile. And let me give you a little bit of background about my life. I was initially an option trader for 20 plus years. <laughs> um, it means I started when I was when I was uh, 10. <laughs> no. but, uh, so I was an option trader for a long time. And I retired to do this, basically research. Um, and, and, but, and, and as, the minute I retired from option trading, it's as if my, my, uh, part of my brain, the reasoning uh, brain, uh, uh, had, had, had a lot of free time uh, to, to reflect on, on what I had done before. And I realized one thing. When you're an option trader, your specialty is volatility, variability things that move. That is your specialty. And your specialty also is pay payoffs, almost the same thing, but mapped differently, that have a uh, more upside than downside. An option, you pay pennies and you can make big dollars or lose the penny and you lose the penny regularly. So one day, looking at a coffee cup, it was not this coffee cup, but pretty close, coffee mug actually, right? I realized that, hey, I may have a, uh, an interesting definition of fragility. And we'll get to anti-fragility in a minute, but you need to understand the fragile. So we have an interesting definition of fragility. Fragility is what does not like randomness, what does not like variability, what does not like shocks, what does not like um, the, uh, the cluster of things. And, and when I look at this coffee cup, look, at, and I put it on a table, uh, it is safe on a table, it wants peace and tranquility. It does, that's why it's fragile. The, so the, we, I realized that the fragile had some properties. Now that we can define the fragile that way, it does not like some shocks and, and, and a few things that, that I'll discuss in more detail in a few minutes, in a few, you know, in about a minute or two. The, the, let's, uh, let's see, you know, what is the opposite. If I'm sending a package to South Africa from New York, what do I write on it? Fragile equals, in other words, handle with care. So the opposite of such a package would necessarily be something that would not be neutral, just like the opposite of concave is not uh, 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 linear. So the opposite of positive uh, uh, concavity is not linear, it's negative concavity. So the opposite of fragile would not be the equivalent of, hey, you know, I don't care, <coughs> it would be solid. It would be something that would be written on it, please mishandle. And that gives us a definition of the opposite of the fragile. <clears throat> Why is it important? Because mathematically, if we can exactly track, figure out what is fragile, and, and even measure fragility, then you put a negative sign in front of it, and you get anti-fragility. So, uh, uh, and, and let me give you some, uh, a little bit of historical background. The ancients actually had the concept that something likes disorder, and and but they did not. Uh, I mean, they used it extensively. They understood it, and and some. But somehow, with science, we lose these uh, um, ancient wisdom, and uh, because they're not formatted in a crisp, you know, way with with clear definitions. So, but they had the image of uh, Damocles. You know, I'm sitting here, and there's a sword on top of me. So nothing good can happen. Just like the coffee cup, uh, nothing good can happen. You know, but except something bad can happen, you see. So it's either I'm going to be neutral, no better off, or worse off, just like the coffee cup. It can break, but it's not going to improve from any random event, okay? The second one is Phoenix, um, you know, the mythical bird. You shoot it, it comes back. You shoot it, it comes back in its original shape. It's not going to improve. It's not going to worsen. And the third category would be, of course, uh, Hydra. You cut one head, two grow back. So not only all right, you should, uh, 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 you know, it's not a good idea to attack it, but attacking it will, will make it 
a lot stronger. So you have to beware. But of course, it's up to a point. And of course, in in in, in the in the mythology, uh, the you know Hydra was tamed by finding tricks. Uh, you know because you always have some vulnerability somewhere. So you're always fragile or anti-fragile with respect to something. For example, this coffee cup may be more fragile with respect to shocks than it is with respect to heat. Uh, it could be the opposite for something in, in um, for a plastic coffee cup, which would be much more thermally uh, fragile, but much more robust, uh, you know, when it comes to shocks. So now I gave you these three ideas. Let me uh, talk a little more about my <laughs> connect uh, volatility. I noticed one thing as an option trader, is that when you don't like volatility, when you have a portfolio that is fragile, a 20% drop in the market would harm you more than twice a 10% drop. So there is nonlinearity. There is some class of uh, it's, uh, things we call acceleration. There is an acceleration of the harm. Uh, so this effectively can allow us to detect fragility, <laughs> because everything that's fragile has necessarily some linear nonlinearity. You see, I can tap on this, tap on this, tap on this. Okay, uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, I I, I increase ten percent, it breaks. I can tap a thousand times, say at a certain intensity, it doesn't matter. Ten percent, it would break. So there is uh, effectively a nonlinearity that needs to be present everywhere, and I've based my research on that. Uh, what is fragile has to have more upside than downside. What is sorry? What is fragile has to have more downside than upside, and with respect to random shocks, uh, and what is uh, um, what is uh, anti-fragile will benefit more from both variability, a lot of things, and necessarily will have more upside than downside from random shocks. So, for example, a, uh, just if I fall 10 meters, I'm harmed more than 10 times if, than if I fell 1 meter. Uh, likewise, the anti-fragile, for example, if you have a portfolio that's anti-fragile, a 10% move in the market would benefit you a lot more than 10 times a 1% move in the market. So these concepts, of course, uh, verbally don't appear clear. They have, uh, like anything in science, science is not very intuitive. Um, it, it takes some, some time uh, to, to, to work through the, the, the points. Uh, I've written quite a bit on that, both in the scientific uh, domain and in general uh, public. And in fact, I started with the general public <laughs> for some reason. Um, it worked better. Uh, so, so it is hard, to, but, but let me now summarize the, the, this uh, brief introduction by saying that um, we, can, we understand a lot more about how systems react to random events from an engineering standpoint. We can detect fragility via, coupled via nonlinearity. Um, how does this connect to things like resilience, uh, robustness of systems? Um, our, our representation is very different. We can only talk about things we can map scientifically, not describe verbally. Uh, so, but uh, the, the, it seems to me that much of what people call resilience would be neither fragile nor anti-fragile, robust, half the time. And, and the rest is effectively anti-fragile. People confuse um, uh, uh, the difference, robustness and anti-fragile, things that gain from shock or things that are neutral to shock. So having, I really wish I were in South Africa, where I've been five times. I wish it were my sixth. And uh, 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 hopefully next time I'll be with you in, in that wonderful country. Thank you.